Good morning and welcome back to my channel. Today is book release day and I'm excited to have you guys here with me to join in on the fun. So I'm gonna show you guys the cover of my new book. It's called Oh Happy Day. I don't think any of you guessed that this was the title, but some of you had some really good guesses as to what the title of the book was going to be. So this is the cover. Book is in hand. Um, I'm so happy with the way it turned out. And last week, if you watched my video on the making of a book series, um, I mentioned that I thought that today I would be with you sharing the book, the book cover inside the book, and the quilts in the book. Well, I filmed that over a year ago, and things have changed, and my quilts are taking a little trip. They are actually up at Lisa Bonjean's in Wisconsin, I think, and she is filming a trunk show with them before they make their way back to me. So I do not have my quilts yet. Sometimes I joke that my quilts are more well-traveled than I am. Um, these quilts are in Wisconsin. I had a quilt go over to France one time for the Quilt Mania publication, and I have not been to France, but one of my quilts has. So this new batch of quilts, they are also taking a little scenic trip back, back home. And when I get them back here, then I will be doing a trunk show, showing you little snippets of some things in the book that I'm really excited about. And it's gonna be a good time. You can get this book in quilt shops today. Um, I have it in my shop today and um, going to be showing up all over the place. So it is available now and keep an eye out for that trunk show coming up soon. So what I thought we would do today is I'm going to do the Oh Happy Day Q&A with you guys. I had asked if you had any questions, things that I hadn't talked about as I was sharing the series. And so I'm going to take time today to answer some of those questions. You guys had some great questions and I love this sort of Q&A format. So I think this is going to be a lot of fun. If at the end of this video you have more questions or maybe you wish I had elaborated on something, be sure to just comment and, and ask those questions. I try to do my best to answer any comments, questions that I have as they come in. So if you have something that I didn't cover today, just be sure and let me know. So I guess we're just gonna dive in. I've got my thoughts written down here and let's see what we can do. Um, the first question, someone asked, do you get to decide how many quilt patterns are in the book? This is something that we would talk about before I would sign the contract. So I would decide about how many projects, the publisher of course weighs in on that, how many projects we wanna put in the book, and kind of at the same time, we talk about how many pages the book is going to have, how many words, there's a certain word count that's planned for the book, uh, how many illustrations they want you to do for the book. Um, and those are kind of the main things. So that is all laid out in your contract and you decide on those things ahead of time. The next question I had is about quilting. I actually had a couple questions about quilting when I showed my solitude quilt in last week's video. I think you guys saw that. Um, I got asked some hand quilting questions. So the first question was, do you hand quilt using a hoop? I do not. I don't think I have ever used a hoop for hand quilting. What I like to do, and I really only like to hand quilt small projects, so I'm speaking specifically about that. Um, I like to spray baste. I like that 505 temporary fabric spray adhesive. That's a really nice one for small projects. And when I say small, I'm thinking probably, I don't know, maybe 36 inches square or less, nothing too big. Um, and I will just spray baste those. That spray baste is very nice. It doesn't gum up your needle as you're working and it is temporary, it's repositionable. So if you, you get everything kind of smoothed out and it's not exactly how you want it to be, you can just readjust, which makes it very nice. Some spray basting sprays are much stickier and those don't work as nicely for hand quilting. Now, I've also safety pin basted. So if you are a safety pin baster, maybe that's how you like to baste your large projects. You can do that for hand quilting. It's, um, it's not my favorite way. It allows a little bit more shifting than I would prefer, but I, I've used that before. You could also thread baste if you like using that method. Um, and then when we get into large projects, my mom has the big quilting frames. So that would be how we would do large quilts. Um, 
I get asked where you can purchase those and if you live close to an Amish community or maybe you can look online they're big though they wouldn't be great to ship like I would feel like it would be something that you would want to pick up locally if you could because the big quilting frames have big long pieces of, of wood so they're not ideal to ship but they work great for hand quilting and you can hoop there are really big hoops um, I've seen as big as 36 inches there could even be larger hoops and there are also those sit down smaller frames that work nice for larger projects so there are a lot of different ways that you can hand quilt I personally prefer spray basting best of anything because it's something that's easy for me to do I don't need any special equipment and it really does work very nicely on small projects and then another hand quilting question was do you use a thimble and this is one of those do as I say not as I do sort of questions because I do not like using a thimble and I will do just about anything I can to get around using a thimble but you should totally use a thimble if you are hand quilting it's going to work so much better for you and if you just get into the habit of using one it's just going to be better all around when I use a thimble I have a leather thimble that I like to use I think if I had to say it's a clover thimble and it has um, leather around the sides and kind of across the top and then on just the pad of the finger it has a metal disc so that's usually what I use there's a lot of different types of thimbles and uh, when I teach hand quilting I always tell people try out different thimbles there are different kinds that you can use and different people use thimbles on different fingers so you might find that you like using your thimble on a different finger than maybe some other people use and some people even use more than one thimble so there's different ways that you can approach thimbles but I do suggest that you use them and get into the habit of using them. If you're ever um, hand quilting in a hoop or on a frame, I don't know that you could get by without using a thimble just because the technique, um, that, that rocking technique that you use for hand quilting is going to be painful to do without a thimble. We can get by when we have room to, you know, kind of scrunch our fabrics if you're just hand quilting on your lap, like for a pillow top or something like that, but um, once you are working um, with a quilting project where everything is taut and you don't have as much movement with your fabric, you are really going to wish that you had that thimble. So get in the habit of using it. It will be so much easier for you. Um, next question, how often do you get to make a quilt just for you? This is, uh, I really like this question. Um, and I had to think about it a little bit to think how I wanted to answer it because Yes, the projects that I am working on are for my job, for work, but I have the fun of designing the fabrics that I want to use in the project, and then once those fabrics are designed, I have the fun of using those fabrics within the project. So from start to finish, it's super creative, and I get to you know kind of tailor things exactly for what I would want to use, and then make the project using that. So it really does feel like I'm getting to do things just for myself, even, excuse me, even though it is, um, you know, work related. That being said, um, sometimes I wanna do something that just is just for fun and without any kind of strings attached or deadlines to meet or anything like that. And those times do come further apart, but I did just finish a project, well, a quilt top, last well just a couple days ago it's just two days ago i finished it so sometimes i fit those in and those are also fun but it's a different kind of fun they're different but it all still feels like i'm just getting to do this for fun and it never for the most part feels like i am doing some kind of a job so i hope that answers that question it's a little bit i know what you're asking but because it's just so much fun to do what i get to do it never really feels like i'm not doing it for myself next question um Let's see, how does a non-designer who's already had books published get a contract? This was a great question. A lot of people don't even know where to start when you're thinking about putting together a book. And I'm going to be answering this question from a like craft book mindset because that's what my experience is. I couldn't even begin to talk about you know writing a fiction book or anything like that, but um, craft books I can talk a little bit about. Many book publishers 
um, will have their book proposal guidelines on their website. So you can just visit their website, download those documents, and they will tell you exactly what they expect from you to submit a book proposal. Some standard things, I was browsing around to see if they had changed much from when I um, had looked those up years ago, and they seem to have stayed kind of standard. Um, oftentimes they're going to want you to have a full table of contents. They will want to see um, not physical samples of the projects that you want to make for the book, but digital, whether that is um, done up in a quilt design program, or maybe you have sketches of projects. They'll want to you know, have a full outline of the projects that you want to have within the book. And then they're going to want to see a sample of your type of writing. So they might want you to, to write up a sample project or you know, a few paragraphs just so they can get an idea of your writing style. And then in addition to that sort of information, they're going to want to know um, more about you personally. Are you active on social media? Do you already have a following that you're going to be bringing to the table? Do you, um, are you teaching? Are you teaching anywhere the techniques that you want to talk about in your book? Are you also teaching those to students um, already? Um, you know, so questions like that, they want kind of your background. Are you involved in the quilting industry or craft industry already? They want to know, you know, those sorts of things so they can get a feel for your background in addition to uh, the book that you would be interested in writing. So, but like I said, all of those guidelines are on the different book publishers so you can easily get an idea of what you would need to prepare in advance to submitting that proposal. When, next question, when you design, do you use colors for your block first and then change to fabrics later, or do you do fabrics first? I do this differently depending on the project. For this book, I designed the projects first, and then I went to see what fabrics I had available immediately so that I could get those fabrics and plug them into the projects. Now, when I am designing quilt patterns for my fabric lines, I do it just the opposite. I've already designed those fabrics, and then once the fabrics are approved and we've selected exactly the prints that are going to be included in with the fabric line, that's when I go ahead and start designing the projects. So it just depends. I'm very happy doing it either way, um, and sometimes it's fun just to approach things differently. Um, just gives me a little bit of a different way to, to work with my creativity, so both ways. But for a book, projects first, typically. Okay. Someone wondered how I mock up my quilts. So when I was sharing this series, I was able to hold up those little um, digital images of the quilts before I had made them. And I almost always, well, I can't even think of a time when I haven't done those digitals first, just because it makes it so easy to see exactly what those are going to look like and to choose fabrics. I like to have those digital images first. The program I use most often is Electric Quilt. It is just solely for quilt design, block design, um, and you can import fabrics depending on what fabrics you want to use. You just import them right into your program and you are then able to lay everything out, see how everything looks, and it's wonderful. There's a little bit of a learning curve to it, but they have wonderful resources for learning how to use it. Um, when I purchased mine, it's been a number of years since I purchased mine, but I know there was a nice book that came in with the software at that time, and it just was lessons. You just worked your way through the lessons, and I, I learned that way. Things have come a long way since I learned how to use the program, so now there is a lot of on on -lorn. There's a lot of online resources that you can use, and that makes things so easy. If you just if you have any questions, you can just go find that information online. So. That's Electric Quilt. Um, another program that I use is Adobe Illustrator. This is, um, it's design software and it is a bigger learning curve and it's also a pricier option, but sometimes what I want to design just doesn't work as well with Electric Quilt, so I will use Adobe Illustrator. I already use that software to design fabric, so it was something I already had. And so I will use that sometimes for 
for quilt patterns as well. And then the last thing is just good old fashioned graph paper. Some quilt patterns uh, are just going to come together nicer if you can just sketch them out ahead of time. So if I'm using graph paper, I will typically sketch it out and then I will take that sketch and, and, and use one of those other two programs to lay everything out from there. But some, sometimes it just works better to start with graph paper. So that's okay too. So you have, um, in order of cost, graph paper is going to be your cheapest option. Um, electric quilt is next. Uh, it's a little bit of a larger sum up front, but Adobe Illustrator is now set up that you're paying a monthly fee. So that's an ongoing expense that you would have. Now, Adobe Illustrator does have a, at least they, they used to, I, I think that they still do, a 30-day free trial. So if you wanted to try that out, you certainly could play around a little bit and see what you think. But um, it wouldn't be my first recommendation specifically for quilt design. I would go the electric quilt route first. Okay. Um, oh, you guys had so many questions. I don't know how many of you asked about the sample making. I mentioned a few times in the videos that I use sample makers. And so I got a lot of questions about how do I become a sample maker? And the first thing I would tell you is to check with your local quilt shop. If you have a local quilt shop, many times they are looking for people who are interested in making samples for them. So that's where I would start. Um, you know, check with them, see if they have any need for that, and they might be able to, to work with you on that. The next thing I'm going to tell you, you might not want to hear, I don't know, but I think social media is, is an important one for this. Um, I know, speaking from experience, I was able to gain such rewards from having a blog and then Instagram. Um, so I see the value in those. I know if, if we could stay, you know, kind of untie ourselves from social media, sometimes that seems like that would be so nice, but there are really benefits, big benefits to being active on social media. Um, a couple of the sample makers that I use, I contacted them because they were on Instagram and they were using my fabrics frequently in their projects. They would take photos and share that on their Instagram feed and I noticed that and so I reached out to them because I knew that they enjoyed working with my fabrics. I could easily see the kind of work that they were doing. I could see um, their piecing. I was able to see the, the quality of their work, um, their skill level, just because they were posting on Instagram. And so I have two sample makers that I work with that I reached out to them because I found them on Instagram. So um, that might not be what you like to hear, but I think that's important um, if you can tag fabric designers that you enjoy working with their fabrics, tag fabric companies that you enjoy working with their fabrics and share good quality photos um, on Instagram. You know, kind of go from there and kind of build it from there. I don't know, I still do blog and I think that's a great way to share too and that's kind of a nice way to um, keep your work all in one place that you can reference people to. It's really nice, like from my point of view, when I'm looking for sample makers, it's really nice if I can just go and look and I can see, oh, they've made this quilt, they've made these blocks. Um, I can see their points aren't cut off, their seams lined up, like that's important to me to be able to see that. So if you can go that route, I think that's helpful. Um, but it is going to be a little bit more work than, than checking with your local quilt shop, if you have a quilt shop. Um, the other group of sample makers that I work with is actually a, a whole team. It's a team of sample makers and when I need something made, I can contact this group of sample makers and then whoever's available and whoever might be interested in making that project could make that sample for me. So if you really wanted to be ambitious, if you and a group of friends you know, wanted to start something up on your own, that would also be a route. I can't talk about how much work or exactly what would go into that. I'm just throwing that out as a suggestion because that is another way that I have worked with sample makers. So for what that's worth, that might be a really fun option if you had a group of friends that you wanted to work with. Um, next question, do you have any tips you can share to get noticed in the quilt pattern publishing industry? Okay. I'm reading my notes here a little bit because this kind of ties into social media from the previous question. Um, so a lot of what I just said about social media is going to apply for this question too. Um, if you're using fabrics of a designer, 
in your pattern, if you're tagging and just making yourself well known in the social media realm. I can think of several people that uh, have started working with fabric companies just because they were making so many different things. They were using um, a lot of fabrics by one fabric company. They made sure to tag that fabric company when they made the projects. Uh, and they just were super active in social media and it led to a lot of opportunities for them. Uh, pattern publishing, book publishing, I've seen it go both ways. Uh, the other thing would be to be involved in like online sew-alongs, be involved in online quilting groups, like on Facebook there are a lot of quilting groups. Anytime that you can participate, it, it's something that you enjoy. I don't say that you need to go out and do all of these things if it's just taking a lot of time and it's not enjoyable for you but if it's something that you're already doing and something that you enjoy just taking the extra step to um, take a nice photograph and tag the fabric company tag the designer just so that you start getting a little bit more notice of your work and then when you are putting out your patterns if you are already starting to put out patterns make sure that you are putting out quality patterns. There are like technical editors that you can send your work to to make sure that they'll just double check all of your math, they'll double check your, your illustrations and make sure that your pattern makes sense, that the wording makes sense to them, make sure that your illustrations are, are well done, your photography is well done. You want to put out a quality product and that is also going to help as well. I think that's my last question for this q and I hope that was helpful for you. And like I said, if you have more specific questions, just feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. I have a few other videos planned for this week and then as soon as those quilts make their way back home from their vacation in Wisconsin, I will be filming a trunk show talking about all things, oh, happy day. Isn't that fun? Oh, happy day. I always feel like I need to break into song, but I won't, so. So thanks so much for following along with this book series, um, and I wish you all just a wonderful, happy day!